13 Questions by Man Transcending Manhood in the Digital Age Welcome to the inaugural episode of the 13 Questions podcast. Um, the 13 Questions for him as uh, we're focusing on, on men right now. This podcast in general is mostly for men, I suppose. I mean, women might get something out of it, but uh, most of our interviewees are going to be men, and most of the questions are going to re- revolve around um, uh, manhood, being a man, what it means to be a man, experience in being a man. Um, there's really no wrong answers to any of the questions. But uh, yeah, that being said, it'll be exciting, and we're looking forward to it, and we we uh, we're hoping everyone will sort of find something that they like here. Now we've also got uh, it's not just a podcast. Of course, we do do this free podcast, uh, which is about about thirteen um, thirteen questions. We do that um, for free. We do that every two episodes a week for free. You get the thirteen questions. Um, of course, we do hope you enjoy listening to those, and there we should know there's also bonus sections. So every show we do. Uh, there's an additional five or six bonus questions as well as uh, some open chat after that where we discuss the process and just sort of chit chat. And uh, we also have some bonus episodes that come out for our members of uh, that the members send in when they interview their grandfathers or stuff like that or just some extra content when we want to get that out. Um, we do that just to our bonus bonus content for just our members. And, uh, of course, we also have over at... Uh, 13questionspodcast.com uh, I think mantranscending.com forwards there for now because we are working on mantranscending.com is going to be the back end of a whole online community we're working on uh, it's take a little longer than expected so for now we've we've gone ahead and we're going to launch 13 questions uh, it comes with most of the stuff mantranscending is going to have not quite all of it probably about three quarters of it um, so uh, that's Part of the reason we're doing it for, I think, seven seventy seven a month gets you everything we offer, and that'll eventually, once we launch everything in a couple of months, that'll probably go up a little bit once um, Man Transcending is fully live, so it's good to get in early. Anyway, in addition to the extra extensions on the podcast, um, two a week, you get two of those a week, plus the odd bonus show. Uh, you also get access to, we've got five courses licensed through TJ Walker, Um He's a communications coach. Uh, So we've got five uh, courses from him, all based in communication skills, which I mean, in my opinion, communication is probably the number one problem humans have on the planet. It's definitely up there in interrelational anyway. Um, That might be an English thing. It seems like people in other languages have more words to get their feelings out, but in English we don't. So anyway, there's these five communications courses. They're each average about, I think they average about 20 or 30 hours a piece of uh, content. So literally over a hundred hours of content in the communications courses, you get all five of those free to our members. I mean, just right there, uh, is, is the values of a hundred, a couple hundred bucks right there. Gone to our members, 77 bucks a year or seven bucks a month. You get access to all that immediately, as well as the bonus shows. You get the five communication courses. Um, you also get put on our mailing list where we send out some weekly journaling, exercises and stuff like that and just some stuff really focused on on helping you maybe get to know yourself a little better and and probe some some inner discovery and uh it also comes along with a private discord which only our members have access to which keeps all the trolls out so that we can have real conversations in there and uh, that gives you the ability to meet some people maybe some people that are on i mean once the community gets going, the hope is that we'll have some people that have gone through what you're going through and things like that, and we can kind of build this community off the backs of each other. I mean, we're going to get access to the private Discord. We've also got some private forums on the website that uh, only the members get access to. And, of course, another thing we're going to let our members do, we've decided we're going to do what I think is the first open source podcast. I'm not sure. That's what I was just going to mention is is the ability to create some of this themselves with people that they know in their life? Well, what we quickly discovered doing the interviews is that it didn't matter if it was uh, so, uh, somebody you never heard of or somebody that was semi-famous or somebody in between. Our first inaugural episode here is with a friend of ours, um, Nikki Benefield, 
who's just uh, uh, just a guy who's a good a friend dude. of ours. He's just a dude, and uh, his answers are great. And what, what we noticed real quickly after about 10 or 12 interviews was there was no bad interviews. And it, we're, you know, some of the guys that weren't famous or didn't have any any sort of prior fame were given better answers than maybe some of the people that were famous. Mm. So, um, and then people were like, oh, I'd like to hear my grandpa. So we, we decided we're going to open source this thing. And if we have, if you're a member of the show, you're welcome. Now we're going to have some standards on audio quality and stuff like that, of course, but we'll help you out with that if you're interested. But uh, yeah, get get a recorder or get Skype or get something going. Take your laptop and, you know, maybe it's your grandpa, maybe it's your boss, maybe it's your uncle, maybe it's your brother. Who knows who it is? And uh, you're more than welcome to go through the process with them. And then you send your audio in to us. And if the audio is up to snuff and all that, then we're going to go ahead and start releasing those, which we thought would, A, give you the chance to try out podcasting, open source the thing, which I think is a first. And more than anything else, it gives you guys the ability to maybe immortalize your grandfathers or your uncles or whoever's story into this digital fucking library that's going to be here forever. And uh, we thought some of you guys might be interested in that. So here we are. I think it's the first thing of its kind, but who knows? I'm sure someone will email and tell us we're wrong. So uh, do you want to go ahead with the, the the bio for Nikki? And then I'll kind of, I mean, I don't think we really need to say much more than that about the site this time. Do you? No, that's a good uh, good starter. I will mention, I guess, yeah, I will mention right off the bat that uh, you get all that. Like I said, it's seven 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 dollars and seventy seven cents a month, seventy seven seventy seven a year, or seven hundred and seventy seven dollars and seventy seven cents for a lifetime. Um, and that's all over at thirteen questions podcast dot com slash sign up. You get over to thirteen questions podcast dot com, you'll find your way the rest of the way. And of course, you can always reach us at uh, thirteen questions podcast at gmail dot com. Perfect. So first, uh, our first guest, Nikki Benefield, a.k.a. Nikki the Dude. He grew up on a farm in south and southern mid- middle Tennessee, and he went into an appliance manufacturing factory at 18 years old to make some money while he decided what he wanted to do. <laughs> and he's still there 42 years later and still searching. So his, his contract there expires in January 2020, so his plan is to enjoy... What comes next with gusto and continue to meet like-minded people? I'm also, or he's also a husband, a father, a papa, and a great American. You guys can look that up. Good vibes and good health. Nikki the Dude. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, those are great answers. We thank you guys for, uh, for checking out the podcast. We hope you'll share it with your friends. We hope you find something here you like. And we hope you sign up. But uh, without further ado... Enjoy the well-thought-out answers from Nikki Benefield. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Mm -hmm. All right. What was the best advice ever given to you? Uh, yeah, well, you know, kind of in the vein of uh, being a better man here that we're uh, talking about. And I remember my dad, you know, at a certain age, uh, taught me to uh, a strong handshake goes a long way, making a first impression there with that. Uh, but then, you know, also, if you want to... Uh, if you want to be a, a good man, then you need to learn to serve. And I think that's a uh, a big thing that a lot of people's looking for their own, you know, uh, gratification or something. But a lot of times you need to be maybe the back of the line and help others along, you know, and, and then that way you maybe you you all get to a better place together. I think. You know, if you look into the Bible, Jesus taught that to his disciples, that if you want to be great in the kingdom, be the last to uh, hear, you know, and stuff. So I think that's uh, along those lines is uh, kind of where I started with that. Would you uh, modify that or would you expand yeah. on that at all? Well, 
uh, as I've gotten older and stuff, you know, just, uh, uh, I think one thing it, it come along in a song, uh, and I, and I tag this a lot of times when I'm in conversations and stuff is, you know, it's, it come out as, uh, if you just keep your gratitude higher than your expectations, I think that's a good kind of, a, almost a mantra, you know, to, to kind of sum up maybe all of that encompassing, you know, you can, you can be strong, but you don't have to be overbearing. You know what I'm saying? So can you, can you say it again? I, I, the gra- I like that. The gratitude harder than uh, your expectation. Your, what? Uh, keep your, keep your gratitude higher than your expectation. Oh, higher than so your expectation. Be, okay. Yeah. 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 Be more, be more grateful. Yeah. Be, be more grateful for what, you know, you, you have. And of course, then I think that allows you to, to help pass on to others may that may have less or or may be less inclined to to uh, understand that you know that we have all these blessings coming to us because you know I mean us being able to sit here and talk like this today is a it's a real blessing a lot of people can't do that you know that's a great phrase actually very simple and powerful so yeah. so I yeah, mean this I think so that kind of this question kind of you know, expands on the last one as well. So what does it mean to be a man in today's world then? Oh man. Yeah. And that, uh, that, that was a kind of a one I've thought about for a while. And I kind of went on to other uh, topics and kind of came back to that later because that is a, that's a tricky, <laughs> you know, because of today's politics really and stuff and, and just the general, uh, I, I guess I wouldn't call it just noise going on around people today, and you know, you, you, you I think you have the rise of uh, of feminism, and and that uh, the patriarchal system is uh, uh, outdated, and so you know they try to redefine what a man should be to you and stuff, and so. But I think just being confident in yourself is a is a big thing and, you know, find your confidence in your, uh, you know, where you can find, uh, things you've done, your accomplishments, you know, that's, that's made you who you are up until this point, but then you need to continue to understand, you know, you're, you're growing as a person and as a man. And, and, you know, there are certain roles that we have in this life, you know, they're unavoidable. I think, you know, that, just because I'm a man or, or, you know, there's a, you know, just cause you're a woman or we're partners in this group, you know, or, or whatever, that there's still going to be roles for each one of us to do. And I think finding that role and, and being, you know, whether it's, you've got to be the leader because, you know, not because necessarily because you're a man, but that, you know, you're in that leadership position because of who you are. And then you have to, uh, make the decisions that you, you know, they may be hard, they may be unpopular, but you, there's a reason you do them. And, you know, and, and so, and if you are leading, you got to learn how to also listen at the same time that, you know, there is input that are valuable. And a lot of times, uh, you know, the the testosterone or the adrenaline gets to flow in a little bit and you kind of go headlong into something because you feel it's right. And so then and at that point, you know, somebody says, wait a minute, I need to, you know, sometimes they may be with you, but they just need to feel like, you know, we need to talk this out a little bit or I need to understand what you're, where you're coming from a little bit better. So, uh, you know, it's a, it's a balancing act, just like, just like life is a, all, all of everything that, you know, you do, I mean, you can, you can just be oblivious to stuff and try to plow along, but you can also be confident enough that you can slow down and, and listen when somebody else expresses concerns, you know? So, uh, I think that's a big thing is, is having some confidence in yourself as a man. And, uh, Excellent. Um, what is your single greatest driving force in life, and what do you do to try and further it? Well, uh, I guess growing up, you know, I grew up on a farm, and, and so, I mean, if you wanted to 
eat or whatever you you worked for it. So I learned a work ethic at a young age, and and that's something that I've always and and that may be the one thing that I do take some sort of pride in. Is uh, you know I I'm not afraid uh, of work. So and uh, uh, so I I take my work ethic, you know, and uh, that's kind of what I base the my life around is uh, how can I, you know, that's as far as helping other people. If, if you if you work and you you look for opportunities to 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 help, I, I consider that a, a form of work. So, uh, and then you know, as far as that goes, uh, that kind of gets into the physical aspect. Uh, try to keep my body in a certain shape where I can be uh, helpful to people. You know, that's a kind of a, a meathead version of it is stronger uh stronger men are generally handier and harder to kill so you know that makes you more useful hmm. so what uh what book has been most influential on your life and and why the book oh man that uh you know it's been few, but i think probably i get down to uh the bible is a uh, I think it's probably the most important book that we've seen around, and and you know, uh, I studied with Bible literalists for years and years. It, they say it's the word of God, and every word of it is truth and literal, and you know, and I've kind of evolved over the years where that's not my uh, my view of it, but I still feel, you know, you you just look at the framework of it. The first five books uh, written by Moses, and I accept that Moses was raised by the Egyptian royalty. So I feel like there's a lot of underlying knowledge that we are looking for nowadays that we feel like we may have lost. But, well, I think he may have incorporated it into that book, and then so and that's one way that some of it's trickled down to us, and you know, like David Matheson or. Somebody, he was also a realist at one time, and he's changed his views on it some, but he distilled the greens, all kind of uh, philosophies and, you know, just not nuggets of knowledge out of it. And I feel like, you know, I do the same thing as I look back uh, and situations come up, and I think of, you know, for, uh, things that I've read before from, from out of there or philosophies, you know, because Paul wrote a big chunk of the New Testament, and he's very stoic in his philosophies and stuff, if you look, if you start reading it, and I think that's a good place to be, because, you know, whether you're in good shape or bad shape, you can still be content in, in where you're at, no matter what, so I, I kind of try to, you know, that way, the highs and the lows are not, don't throw you off, uh, off track that bad. What institution of society or structural aspect of modern life would you change given the chance? Well, I think I think that's pretty easy nowadays. We see all the uh, problems that, that this large government, you know, uh, governing bodies, and, and here in America, of course, you know, our Congress and stuff like this is, uh, I still think this system that was set up over 200 years ago is a great way to govern as a society and stuff, but we've let the people become, you know, now we've got career politicians. I mean, you think the guys that, that you know, the frame framers of this uh, experiment, they, uh, they went to Washington or Philadelphia or wherever they were going at the time and come together talked about laws, made laws, and then they went home. And, you know, and so now we've got this whole bureaucracy that we've got to support 24-7 now, not the other way around. They should be supporting us. You know, I mean, I'm not talking monetarily or nothing, but the government should be here to increase the the society's uh, betterment, you know, and too much, too much now. It's just more rules, and and you know ways to really limit us instead of uh, enhance our society. So I would change. I would definitely 
change just the structure of the, the way the government's run and handled now. So what, what daily habits or rituals do you have? And if, if so, would you recommend those to others? Well, I, I don't do a lot of kind of rituals, but of course, you know, the personal hygiene thing is pretty, uh, should be something for everybody, but you know, I, I don't know. I make, I make the bed that I get up out of every day whenever, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a different sleeper. So whatever morning is for you, I guess to me, it's afternoon, but <laughs> when I get up out of it, you know, one of the first things I do is, is make that bed up and, and, uh, just kind of something that, you know, get yourself going and set yourself up for the day. And, and you know, of course, your personal hygiene stuff and it's something you do every day. You try to, uh, as I age a little bit, I understand that, that, you know, moving your body physically is a good thing. So I try to do some sort of, you know, it don't have to be structured exercise necessarily, but some kind of movement or something to, to, to kind of, uh, get your body, get your blood pumping or something. And then, you know, we're talking about books, uh, uh, looking at, you know, reading something. Or um, uh, Louis Simmons is a uh, power lifter and, and trained, you know, thousands of guys at Westside Barbell and does a lot of riding. And that was his thing is if you just spend an hour a day on whatever subject you might be interested in, if you spend an hour a day reading about that, you're going to be one of the experts in that field in six months, you know, because even in, you know, the majority of the people that may claim to be experts, they don't, they don't spend that much time, you know, not even an hour a day on, on that subject. So I think a little bit of a, you know, some kind of where you're looking at articles or papers or, you know, just, I don't know if the, uh, Social media is that great because of the odd stuff you may run in, run across there, but uh, just tying the physical and mental together, I think, is a is a very good thing. Just keep yourself centered, and uh, uh, you know, take some sort of practice for you to kind of calm your body down, calm your mind down. Whether it's meditation, I'm not a I'm not a meditator per se. I have a lot of trouble with my mind racing when I get quiet, but uh, that's okay, I guess, as long as you just just take a take a few seconds and center yourself. Yeah, we all do. We all have the monkey mind. Yeah. <laughs> so, how important is traditional marriage to you? Is it is the traditional model still worthwhile? Do you think? Uh, yeah, I think it is because I mean that that is that's still what we consider family, you know. Now I've kind of expanded on that, and family don't necessarily have to be blood, you know. Uh, any I think, especially in days like today, and 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 you know, and that's what I appreciate about uh, Gramerica is uh, this community that's building around, you know, the work y'all do, and. Uh, uh, the help y'all give us all because it is a help i think it's a place where you can express your views and and be kind of a family together you know like-minded that that's set off i like that but uh yeah but as far as the marriage part it you know yes i think uh you know having a man and woman and children as a family unit is is the environment that is going to raise your healthiest uh adults you know as they're coming up now, you know, your children, you, you always have your hopes and dreams for them and stuff. And it, it may not turn out the way that you envision it, but look, they turned out the way they, you know, and you, you have guided them to this point. And at some point in time, you just kind of have to be there and help them, you know, and stuff. And as far as your mate, you know, that uh, and if you're married, then the two of y'all, You've got to figure out your own, you know, because there will be a time where you're not raising kids anymore, you know. Uh, but it seems like there's always so there's always grandkids in or something, something going along, and and that that family structure needs to be there. I think it's it's a really good thing, and uh, uh, yes, having both uh, sides of the coin, you know, a man and a woman, is a 
Uh, and, you know, I'd, I'd rather see that than the one-sided, like both men or both women. Uh, I think you kind of get a, a skewed pers- perspective from that, that point of view. So, you know, and uh, as far as making a, a marriage, you know, I know the they call it gay marriage or, or whatever, but uh, um, that's come about because of we're getting back to the bureaucracy thing of the government and stuff and insurance companies and all this are forcing people because you just couldn't go in there and say, well, you know, Graham is uh, my best friend and I trust him more than anybody. So, uh, you know, I would like for him to be my beneficiary or handle anything in case of I got in trouble. Now, I get. I can't just do that unless mm. you know I have a piece of paper saying that we're connected or whatever. Mm. You know, so if if you could do that outside, you know, just because you know, say my brother is the one that I trust the most. So you know, I'd rather have him handling things for me than you know because maybe maybe my wife is you know she's not good under that sort of pressure or, or she don't want. She don't want that kind of pressure, so she'd rather have somebody else help her or, and do it for her. But I can't just, you know, tell anybody out there I want to. I have to, I have, to have some sort of, a, uh, you know, certificate. And so, yeah, that's a good point. I think that's one of the driving things behind that. If you could do one thing in your past differently or change one thing, what would it be? Uh, I think in my past, I guess is, uh, and I, and I think it's just a, a function of use. Is uh, you come up, you know, you trust people, and and I guess growing up in it, sort of the traditional family that we just talked about, that I did, uh, you you trust older people are telling you the truth, and and they're looking out for your best interest, and that's. You know, I hate to be cynical, but as you grow, uh, that's not always the case. You know, so probably when I was younger, I got myself into trouble because I just, okay, uh, you know, uh, the government says this or, you know, this report came out today. And so, okay, that, you know, the government said said that's right, so it's got to be right. And that's not, you know, we've learned that, yeah, there's nefarious people out here in this world and you kind of got to watch out for them. So it's a, it's a line you walk. You don't want to turn jaded or hard, but you, you just can't be blindly trusted either. I guess that comes back to the, uh, advancing your mind too, you know, along, keep the, keep your eyes open, but keep your heart open too. So. Yeah. Do you have any experiences that were really embarrassing? Like what was the most embarrassing experience of your life? Oh, well, <laughs> we, I actually talked about this one with, the, with my mom and dad last night before they went to bed and stuff. And they talked about stuff when I was a little kid, you know, and, and I didn't really even remember any of it, but they just <laughs> thought it would be. But, uh, yeah, after, I guess I was about 19 or 20 years old and uh, county fair and uh a lot of alcohol involved, but it, anyway, I I ended up in front of a couple thousand people in, in front of the band. You know, out, I went out to everybody else was sitting in the stands, and uh, I started out by myself out there dancing in front of a crowd that I never would have under any other circumstances. And of course, I didn't feel embarrassed that night, but uh, then the next couple of years, or even years and years later, I, people, I we seen you at the fair one night and you were just dancing and they're waving and screaming and you know, and I, okay yeah and you know i was known in the community a little bit because i played uh, quite a bit of baseball so a lot of them had seen me do that and stuff and that was kind of a uh a side of me nobody had ever seen <laughs> even myself <laughs> If you were to ask, if I were to ask your best friend, what is the one thing that they would say you need to work on the most, and why? Yeah, uh, probably is uh, the 
following through with something of procrastination is, I guess, it, it, because, you know, I, I, that's one thing that's important to me. If I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm, uh, I'm going to do it. I would try to, you know, keeping your words is an important thing to me, but uh, maybe getting it started is I have a problem, you know, and I, and I have friends and family that the opposite thing is true. Uh, they're uh, gun ho on getting something going, but getting them to finish, follow through is one thing. So my mine is probably uh, I I put it off or I just kind of uh, well okay I we yeah we can do that and and then I let it ride until we get down to you know maybe a deadline or something and then, and it, then I don't give stuff a full attention. It maybe maybe that's why I'm not much of a, a finished guy. You know as far as uh, work goes, I'm I'm the I can throw up the drywall for you, but as far as making it look good, I'm I'm not that great at that, you know. So <laughs> it's different. <laughs> it's different. I guess we all have different elements and stuff. And uh, maybe I'm the starter, you know. I'm the finisher if if you can get it started for me or whatever. So, uh, or I can I can help you get all the uh, material there. I I can carry stuff, you know. I'm good at that kind of thing. So maybe maybe you can help me get started and I, I'll help you finish, you know? So, yeah. Uh, what's your, uh, what's your greatest fear? And if, and how do you overcome that? Oh man. Uh, I guess, uh, kind of the fear of failure. Uh, you know, I think that bothers us all. You, don't, you, you, you really don't want to put yourself out. If it's something you feel like, you might not be able to do. You don't want to be looked of as short or something. But then, that, of course, that's that's going to be uh, a thing that holds you back and limits you. Maybe maybe that ties into the procrastination thing. You know, is uh, in the back of my mind that little that little eight year old that says, "Oh man, you know, I won't ever be able to do this. And I can't." You know, and yeah, that that's always kind of there. So. Uh, and that's probably that's probably stopped me from doing stuff, or uh, you, know, you know, just because it, it, if you don't, but if you don't ever try anything, if you've never failed at nothing, you've never tried anything, you know. So yeah, you have to you have to power through a lot of things sometimes. What are you most curious about? Ah, uh, that's. That's things that are like you know. That's where uh, y'all come in again and stuff. Like, uh, yeah, where we come from, you know, where we're going, and does the first affect the latter? You know, it is because you always hear, you know, if you don't learn from history, you're bound to repeat it. Well, you know, maybe there are certain aspects of of history that were, or you know, I'm talking not just my own personal history, but the hi- you know, societal or mankind or whatever in the big picture type things that we may need to learn from, and we, you know, so we can avoid this, but we can maybe go here, you know, and this may help us uh, together. So I'm always curious about that, you know, and, and uh, uh, just those those eternal questions, I guess, that everybody always has. Yeah. So this this question kind of builds on the on one of the previous ones about about doing things differently in your past, but what would you tell your teenage self? Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that's, that's probably what I would tell my teenage self is, is don't be afraid to fail, you know, because over the years, I mean, you know, uh, I have, I've, I've failed plenty of times, but guess what? I haven't failed a lot of times too, you know, I, I, I've, I've surprised myself. I've exceeded, you know, other people's expectations because I did try and I did, you know, and, and, and that's probably the thing I would say is once you uh, choose a path or, or go a direction or, or, you know, take on a task, then put your whole self into it. Don't, don't half-heartedly or don't worry about what you think other people may think of you when you're, trying something you know just concentrate on 
what you've chosen and 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 make it successful as you can you know so since uh I'm going to ask a little bonus question here just to follow up on that thread. And what are the failures mm-hmm. that you sort of remember the most or that you most cherish over your life or that sort of, you know, stand out? Yeah, well, you know, I, uh, I look back at sports. Uh, you know, I grew up in, uh, as a baseball player and then uh, older in my life, at 45, I started trying uh, uh, strength athletics, you know, powerlifting strong man and that sort of thing and uh you know i've been in in situations where i got thoroughly beat i mean you know and and i've actually heard the phrase man that's got to be embarrassing before but no guess what it's not it's 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 not embarrassing i'm proud i got out there you you're sitting over here on the sidelines thinking that's embarrassing what's embarrassing is you didn't get out there and try it you know you didn't you didn't have the nerve I did. I did it. You know, even if, even if the, I come out with nothing but mud all over myself, you know, I, I, I got in there and I tried. And then the times that I was able to accomplish something, and it, it, it makes it that much sweeter you know, because you know how hard you've worked. And you know how many times you may have tried and, and didn't get there. Do you have any big regrets at all? What was your biggest regret? Well, you know, regrets, is, it's, I guess when you're sitting and thinking on your own self, uh, yes, there's always regrets, but then that's something that I try not to dwell on that much because what am I, you know, you, you, oh, I can't really change it. It's there, you know, and stuff. Now, that's the thing about learning from history and now personally, you know, you know uh, wide scope but uh uh trying you know okay let's change my behaviors here so i don't end up in the same spot i was at and but you know i ended up where i'm at because of the choices i made and if you sit here and just regret that then you're not going to grow anymore and that's the thing i'm i'm old enough now where i'm looking at things like you know but not just looking on, oh, you know, I'm getting old and it's all done. No, it's every day is a new chapter. So let's, you know, make the most of it. Let's, can, you know, you grow you grow or you die, I think. So yeah. having, dragging regrets along with you. Now, you know, having them and processing them are things, yeah, you need to look at that. But as specifically just taking a point in your life and going, oh, if I could change that, I would. Well, you know, the the butterfly effect comes comes to mind there. What happens if you were able to go back and change that? Now, where you end up, you know, now it's it's just it's worthless. It's not going. It's not going to help. I mean, acknowledging the fact that it that may have been a mistake. I guess that's a better way to put it than regret. That was a mistake, and I don't need to repeat that behavior, or I don't need to make that choice again. That that's learning from it. So I guess that's processing the regret. But, you know, just sitting down and and oh man, I don't know what I'm going to do because I messed this up so bad. You know, and I I've hurt you know the hurting individuals uh, is yeah that's you know if you're a if you're a loving human being you're You've heard other people, and and you regret that. I, I I've done it. I do. Uh, make amends the best you can. Acknowledge that to to that person specifically, you know, and or people or whatever your situation is. But then, you know, just don't sit there with that bag in your lap, digging through it over and over again. Uh, you know, set it down walk away from it and try to do better. Wow. Great answers, Nikki. That's awesome. That's uh so we give you a little bit, a little bit more than 13 there. And of course, if you guys do head over to mountrandsending.com and, and get a membership today, you do get the, the five bonus questions that we asked Nikki after, and then a little bit of free form discussion as well. But, but yeah, thanks. Thanks for coming on the show, Nikki. Those were, were great answers. Yeah. 
I thank you. I, I, I think uh, uh, you guys, the last five years and five plus years that we've been together now, you've, you've shaped my worldview a little bit, and I hope you know I can give back. That's my that's my goal. It's, uh, you know, I get and learning to receive is a big thing too. You know, you I used to have problems. I all I can do this. I can handle. You know, on my own. But no. Uh, you know, if people want to give and are, are willing to give to you, uh, be grateful in receiving. You know, that's a, that's a that's something I had to learn, and that's what and and you guys have helped with that. And I, I promise you, you have. And so then I want to in turn, you know, I just want to be a conduit that it, it can pass through, and hopefully I can expand on it a little bit. Excellent. Hey, let's go into some bonus questions here. Let's start with what what was the most important lesson that you learned from your parents? Um, uh, from my parents is the fact that things don't always go like you planned them. You know, and that's a, I think I've heard my my mom, you know, say like, you know, life is something that happens when you're making plans. So you, you you know, but you know, I I posted pictures on the Discord not too long ago. Uh, we just celebrated them having sixty years together. So the fact that they've always, no matter what their situation is, they've always found a way to come back together instead of split apart. You know, that's that's something you got to work at. It is. And, uh, that's probably, you know, they're just living examples of that. So, so Nikki, how did you get to this place and, and what would you change? Oh man. Uh, I know that's a know, big, I know that's a big question, but I think, you yeah. know, I think you get the gist, yeah, the yeah, gist of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yes, I do. And, and, uh, how I got here, a lot of that is, uh, Maybe you know, if I the first thing that pops in my head is just blind luck, but I know that's not true. You know that because you know luck. A lot of times it's what you make. You know, Gary Player is one of the greatest golfers to ever play, and his mantra is: the more he practiced, the luckier he got. So <laughs> I I think of that often. You know, is if you if there's something in your life or you want to manifest something, then you have to work at it. You have to, you know, whether it's a, a daily practice we were talking about earlier today, or, you know, just if you're, if you dwell on it, you know, and I, and I talk about that a lot, uh, because I have, uh, people close to me that I feel like they dwell on negativity or the negative side of things. And, it comes out even even their happy times kind of comes out of a negative viewpoint because too much of the time that's what's in their mind, you know. And so I try to not just be sunshine and rainbows all the time because that's not life. But you know, you've got to. You, I'm also been an optimist, and I think that's something I learned from my parents too and stuff. You know, my. My my dad, he was the alpha male always. You know, he's been the, the prototypical alpha, alpha male most of my life. And so in that vein, I learned to be a beta. You know, I learned to pick my spots, and but also jump in here and keep it going, you know. Mm-hmm. And, from, and from my mom's side, just looking at the, you know, picking up and going on and, and looking at the, you know, best side of it yes we do have life and we are blessed in where we're at in our life you know we may not have riches as far as monetary and stuff like that but we've got stuff that's much much more important than that so yeah that's that that would be my thoughts there what um what is the biggest mistake that modern men are making Oh man. Uh, well, you know, societally, I I think uh, 
you know, you got to be a dad. I mean, that's a, you know, if you don't have children, you can still be a mentor, you know, you can still, and, and I, I think that's all a dad is, is somebody that looks out for the well being of somebody younger or less uh, evolved. I don't know if that's the right word to use, but, uh, you know, somebody that you feel like could, you could, they could help you. You could help them with their growth, you know, and, and becoming a, uh, or just being there for them. Because some people, you know, everybody needs support. And support groups. I mean, they're everywhere now and stuff. But so, you know, when I say being a dad, I don't. It you may not ever have children, you know, of your own blood. But I I have plenty of young people, young you know, uh, younger guys. Uh, that's not my blood kin, but they're also, I consider them my sons or, or uh, uh, my daughters, you know, and, and uh, uh, I could help them any way I can. I do anything I can do to help them, you know, because that is, you know, the whole ancestral worship thing, you know. Uh, I think that springs from learning from elders, and that's, we need to pass that on. Too many times that gets broken, and, and especially modern today you know it's easy to to make a baby but it's hard to raise one yeah good point so here's the toughest question of all what will people say at your funeral nikki <laughs> i'm proud i'm not there is <laughs> what uh, i would say but no uh you know funerals too often is are they they just expound on you know how great a person you were and stuff but i hope they're going to say i was loyal you know to whatever uh if you needed a friend i was there uh, I, w- I would hope people would remember that you know remember me finally that way and that i was an upbeat person it was fun to be around you know i i, I may not be no world changer but hey if you're going to have to face something I, you know, I just hang in there with you. I'll be there. You know, that that kind of thing is important to me, and I hope I hope I've been able to do that. I'm going to throw you a little bit of a curveball here, Nikki, because uh, we 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 kind of right. got a little excited in the pre-question, so we asked you mm-hmm. many questions. So this one you haven't <laughs> heard yet. This one you're not prepared okay. for, but it's uh, I think it'll be a pretty easy one. I think you'll have no problem with it, and it'll be a good one for some of our younger listeners as well. Um, what skill or hobby do you wish you had learned when you were younger? Ooh, uh, well, the, I, this is actually fairly easy for me, and, and that is uh, uh, music. Um, I have, uh, I lack even rhythm. I, you know, I just, I just don't. <laughs> you know, I've, I've looked at guitars before, and I have friends that are very musical. And they've shown me stuff, and you know, I wasn't able to grasp it very quickly, and so I just didn't. Uh, I thought, you know, I just chalked it up as that's a that's a God-given talent. That's something that you either got or you don't. And I necessarily, that's not true. But that's you know, I love music. I, I use it, you know, daily. That's I guess getting back to daily rituals. That's one thing. I, I'll listen to some sort of music, probably at least an hour or more a day, you know, and uh, whether it's when I'm hiking around or, or uh, puttering around the house or something like that, you know, it's just soothing. So as I've aged, it's something that I would like to maybe be an accomplishment, but I've, my procrastination has kept me from doing it. Right on. That, I feel the same about music. I've always just said I was, yeah. you know, oh, it's, I've it's, always just said I, c- I can't do it, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's me. That's exactly. Yeah. And, and, you know, I was power of my first wife. Uh, she was a singer, uh, you know, and I, uh, I was the dude I could slap around. I can pick up them big amps and, and speakers and stuff like that, you know, because I was physically strong. And so I thought, well, this is my, that's, Going back to being a beta, I was looking for places I could fit in. That's where I fit in. So and instead of trying something that I couldn't do at that time, but I could have learned, you know, I just took this 
okay, I'll take this role. Yeah. And yeah. I'll slip all this stuff around for you, you know, and stuff and enjoy that enjoy it that way. So but yeah, that's that's part of not putting yourself out there sometimes. And now I guess I'm at the point where I need to go ahead and put myself out there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So so obviously these weren't weren't easy questions, Nikki. Uh We'd like to thank you yeah. for coming on. What what was it like working working through them? Was was what was the process like of of answering these questions and going through them? Was it was it an easy thing to do, or were there parts of it that were easier than others? Well, yeah, some of it just answers itself almost, I think. But but no, a lot, a lot of them, yes. Uh, you know, you have to look inside, and that's uh, you know. Uh, that's kind of a big place to rattle around in sometimes is inside your own heads, you know, that's, uh, when we, when the lights go out and, the, uh, that's when the, the fear, I guess was what we were calling it or that, uh, we always, you know, masculinity is equated with confidence and we all have spots where we're not confident. And that's spots that you work on, but that's also the spots that when I looked at certain ones of these questions, you know, it was, uh, uh, this was, oh, I don't know if I want to go there or not. You know, it's yeah. like being, what's it mean to be a man today in today's society and stuff? I'm not sure I've got a great answer for that. Yeah, I, exactly. I told you what I thought, but, you know, it's it's hard. It, it, it That is changing, and I, I don't know if y'all seen it in Canada, we have a commercial down here now that they're showing, you know, there's not a, uh, what you would call a patriarchal role model in the whole commercial. They're talking about being a man don't mean masculine, don't mean this, or, you know, uh, I think they're trying to take us to that vanilla androgynous society. I'm sorry. And that's not you know, that's not, you know, I, I'm a man and I celebrate women, you know, that's, man, they're the best things that's ever happened to us, you know, yeah, yeah. but then if it's not the, you know, if, if, yeah, if they're not treated with respect and stuff, it does, it breaks down some, some, but that don't mean that we, we don't need to understand and celebrate our differences because we do, we because those differences is what makes this world so exciting. And so, uh, you know, I'm ready to get up this morning and see what we got going, you know. So what is there stuff that uh, you're working yeah. on in, uh, and that you're certainly going to focus on in the future that you're going to work on in the future? Like th- this or uh, this yeah, or, uh, or big picture stuff, like, you know. Yeah, you know, just as far as just my physical life that's going on right now and, and stuff, you know, I, I'm coming up on a – a retirement date. I've pretty much set it as as uh, uh, January of 2020. Oh, that's nice. The end of a contract that we're under. Yeah, that's that's the end of the contract we're under with the company I've been working with my whole life, my whole adult life. You know? So uh, I think it's time for you know at that time it's time for me to move on. So of course I've got my head bound trying to financially get myself to the point where you know I can give up that. I, you know, I have streams of income, but I, that's my main one still. So uh, I'll have to, you know, figure out ways that I can go and not be afraid of taking that leap when the time comes. So yeah, that's my my main focus now. But always, as we talk, I try to, you know, I try to read and stuff. I I see another day, Graham, Han- Graham Hancock got something else new coming out. And Randall, I read, you know. I read something from uh, uh, his blog or David Matheson's blog. I read something there uh, weekly, you know, and, uh, you know, Sacred Geometry or uh, Matheson Corollary, they're two of the main ones that uh, luckily they're on uh, uh, Twitter. And so it, it keeps it in your mind, you know, sometimes <laughs> even though you're interested, you, you'll space out on it if it's not, if it don't pop up every now and then. So. Do you, do you have any do you have any questions you think we missed? Is there any questions you would add to the list? No, oh, uh, I as far as 
uh, ways to be to better yourself is being a man or or yeah j- yeah uh, exactly yeah I, questions you wish we would have yeah, asked or you yeah. think we missed i i've not i look i look through those and those you know i think we covered uh, the, the biggest part of it you know I, there's always you know how it always is and after a conversation oh man i wish i said this or, but you'll have to call me back in about two hours i guess <laughs> <laughs> Something like that will pop into my mind just out of random, you know. But no, I think we've done a pretty good job of it. It seems. Uh, yeah, thanks know, for seems, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that was that was about perfect. Big thanks for coming on the show, Nikki. If you could uh, over I the next it. over the next week or two, if you could just um, email email us a little bio of kind of just that uh-huh. we can use for the intro, and then yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah big, I can do that. big thanks for coming on. That was fun. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks for your thoughtfulness okay. and your good yeah, answers. I, I appreciate y'all having me, and, and uh, this is this has been this has been good for me too. Yeah, right on. Sweet. That's what we're looking for, right? Uh, growth. Uh, yeah, that's right, yeah. buddy. Thanks so much, Nikki. Yeah. Okay, bye. Right. Okay, right. bye bye. Bye. Thanks. Later. I don't want no hard night. I don't want no hard night. No what? I don't want no hard night. I don't want no hard night. No what? I don't want no hard night. I don't want no hard night. No what? I don't want no hard night. I don't want no hard night. No what? I don't want no hard night. I don't want no hard night. No what? I don't want no hard night. I don't want no hard night. No way. Is one man rich and another man poor? Why we ain't satisfied? Why we gotta have more? Why your suicide rates on the rest so high? Why I tell you the truth, but you say don't lie? Why is being a good father at an all time low? Why is it acceptable? Yo, why I don't know. Why she blame him and he blame her? It's useless. Ask yourself this question, why you making excuses? Why do parents gotta bury their kids? Why we text and drive, not caring how scary it is? Why you so hard to forgive and leave the past behind? And if you did, then that's divine. Why don't you help your brother when you see him fall? Why do we act like God don't see it all? Why do we call them black, them white, them Asians and use labels? Now that's racism. I don't want no hard night. I don't want no hard night. No what? I don't want no hard night. I don't want no hard night. No what? I don't want no hard night. I don't want no hard night. No what? I don't want no hard night. I don't want no hard night. No what? Why is it innocent people locked up for life? While some people can't say nothing nice. Why do we always got a question with all of the means? And why won't you follow your dreams? Tell me why. The night when you took my dad. Why'd you let me see my grandpa cry? And tell me why. And why do you choose to hide? Even though you was born to fly. And tell me why. And why don't we turn from all the hate? And why don't we learn from all mistakes? Why do I keep on wrecking these fat beats? And teachers don't make more than professional athletes. And why? This should be considered entertainment and not therapy. We hope you benefit from our resources available at 13questionspodcast.com. Thank you for listening.